tonight's co-ed teams round of 32 here live on table one from the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire I'm Matt Hetherington here again with Stephanie Shi. we have a few matches coming up on this table from the same co-ed team round between UBC and UVA of Virginia 19 seed versus the 16 seed I believe the first match on this table is going to be between Shahia Kaderi and Poppy Lee. They'll be playing matches from this team tie on both tables. Of course, we'll get all the good ones here on table one because naturally, because we're here, right? Of course, it's us. So we saw Poppy Lee playing in the doubles earlier this morning. UBC is in the yellow and blue shirts. UVA is in the in the navy. So the format for co-ed teams is pretty unique to NCTTA. There's four singles matches and a doubles match if necessary uh, for the fifth Tie deciding. Breaker. Yes, for the fifth deciding match. So every match is best three out of five. And determine the order of your team basically in advance of this competition, right? Yes, yeah, so every team was asked to submit what's called a default lineup. Um, so that's, you know, if for whatever reason you missed the deadline to turn in your lineup for each team tie, there is a, mm -hmm. a default, um, a default order. And the relative order of players can't change, so you can't have the second player ever play in front of the first player, the fourth player pl right. play in front of the third, and so on. Um, so the bigger roster that you have, the more flexibility there is and the more interesting it gets. And the first singles always has to play doubles, and the partner can be anybody else on the team. Getting the eye drops in on the bench there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Got to make sure you can see when uh, you're about to coach your player. I mean, the details can be very minute, so vision is important. I remember some table tennis players when they were younger saying their parents made them play table tennis because it helped with their eyesight. Yeah, that's a lie. But I most of the players that I know that started playing table tennis because it was good for their eyesight now wear glasses. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It abs that's absolutely not true. I've always had terrible vision. <laughs> and astigmatism doesn't help. And it, it really messes with you when you see one and a half balls. Can't imagine. Well, hopefully sooner or later we can actually start a match here. Yeah. Not quite sure what the <laughs> hold up is. I really but don't know what's going on at all. I think they're just moving the barriers around to make sure there are no gaps, but with these barriers it's kind of tough, but So 
we saw Poppy Lee play earlier on. She was kind of control spinning style, not too aggressive. Just very steady, slow spinny openings. I think Kaderi is going to be the more, definitely the more aggressive of the two, but we'll see oh. how his timing is. Oh. Whoops. Technically, if we're sticking to the rule books, um, probably lose that point, but he's granted some leniency. For men and women playing in the same event against each other is fairly atypical. In, in New Zealand, did they ever do this or anything like this? Uh, I would say almost never. I think I only remember a couple of occasions. Usually you'll have like an open singles event and then graded singles. Um, sometimes they mix the men's and women's graded singles. Uh, if there's a really short draw, they just mash them both together. So when you came to the US and you found potentially having to play against females, female players, did that throw you off at all? Um, I think I was one of your first matches. Yeah. Many, one. many, many years ago. I think Judy was my first match. Well, that's like one way to be introduced to U.S. table tennis. I lost in five, I think. It was pretty close. But that was my first tournament that I played in the U.S. Was against, yeah, it was Judy was the first. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I played with uh, Sophie, who's living in the U.S. now, mm -hmm. uh, Adam Hughes' wife. I, I played with her a lot in New Zealand, so... I'm not exactly a stranger to Jordan! playing practice matches with women's players, but I mean, I'm slow, so women are faster at table tennis. They play close to the table earlier in the bounce, so it can be pretty intimidating for, for guys to play against women. That being said, Poppy Lee's style is not, not quicker and earlier in the bounce. It's a little bit slower, so... I think she could struggle style matchup wise here. There's the warning for dropping the hand and the ball toss up from under the table. Great serve. So I think she definitely has to be the aggressor to uh, to get to get the advantage in this match, especially because Kadiri looks like he's not hesitant to, mm. to open up. And I haven't quite observed her defensive skills yet, but if I were her, I'd, I'd open as much as possible. Yeah. Jordan! yeah. I mean, that ball, I don't know if it was short. I feel it was like too she, high. But her, she pushed that ball. I feel like she pro she could have looped that. I feel like it was going long. Probably. But and actually, against him, she'd probably be okay playing slow and spinny anyway because a lot of players struggle to adapt to that, that is true. slower style. But slowing down is harder than it sounds. Uh, not everyone can actually do it. So let's see. Umpire calling for blocking there, for not clearing the arm. There are a lot of different serve rules. He did call a let straight away, so it's a warning. So after the ball leaves your hand, it, the, the path of the ball and the contact of the ball can't be blocked by any part of your body. That includes your free arm, your head. <laughs> some some instances, a lot of players end up blocking it. He just asked if it was good. Just double checking. So I do think the top spin serves for her are going to be the way to go because underspin serves means he's going to push and if she pushes back and oh, come on. doesn't initiate yep. she's just going to be on the back foot the whole time yeah. so let's see if he can manage to adjust the serve without messing himself up too much yeah I mean it can be really hard I <laughs> it seems like a really simple thing to do like uh, move your free arm a little bit further out of the way but table tennis is it's already hard enough yeah exactly it's complicated enough 
all the weight transfers and the small balances of different body parts moving, like the mechanics of it. Are and really at a certain point it becomes muscle memory you're not thinking about it. So yeah. as soon as you have to consciously adjust something, it yeah. totally screws everything up. Right. That's why I found it hilarious that when they hosted the World Veteran Championships in Vegas in 2018, they had, I think, probably like three and a half thousand players ranging from over 40 to over 90. Wow. And I <laughs> just didn't even really bother umpiring most of the matches because everybody was serving illegally. You had like you know, 70 old players just serving out of their hands. And right. There was a, a period of time where that was less of a an issue and yeah. you're not going to teach old dogs new tricks. Let's just call it for what it is. First game, Shahir Kaderi for the University of Virginia. 16th seeds in the co-ed competition, so they are seeded to make the round of 16. But they will have to win here. And both players have gotten warnings on their service, so they're both going to have to be careful because they think next next call is just going to be probably gonna get a straight fault. Yeah. And as we were talking about before, the, the margin for error is very small, so you really can't afford to give away freebies. And so that's probably like the third or fourth time we've watched her pop up a, a dead serve too high. I'm going to pretend that I did that on purpose. <laughs> Poppy popped a serve too high. <laughs> and then it, it just sets up a way too easy shot. Uh, yeah. for I mean, her hit. mentality has to be if somebody's pushing a ball along at you, do not push it back. Yeah, like she's she just got to be ready. To loop. Yeah. And if, even if you lose, it's better that way than... Right. Yeah, make the right choice. Yeah, it's either that or when she pushes back to him, she has to Be really to add a lot of pressure. And I think she's got to anticipate that he's actually not going to serve much under spin. Mm. Right, yeah. I mean, adding side, if he can get her to push, receive... Anything that pops up for him, he's going to go for it. Again. Ooh. Good job anticipating where that was going that time. Oh, tried to go for the chop. I feel like if he waited and looped that one. I think that came back a little slower than he thought it was. Come on! He's definitely shown that he's willing to go up the line or cross cars, so it's, it makes it difficult for her to predict. But her strategy really should not be to play defense this, this match. Come on. First push from her was better. I mean, if she plays a good quality long push and he pushes back. But then she's got to hit the next one. She has to loop the next one. Right. Goes for the flip. She's trying some different things, but... He's still not serving underspin. I don't think he will for the whole match. Right, so I, I, I don't quite follow the strategy to keep trying to chop it. Probably didn't need that one, but he'll take it anyway. Nice. I was actually just about to say, I would try giving him a long pass spin to the back end just to see what he'll do with it. She and was she kind of almost tending towards her forehand there as if he was going to hit down the line. So right. Good, good readjustment. Yeah. Jinx. Not a bad play. Even if it's slow, just making the flip instead of pushing is something. I mean, he blocked it. Right. It's a slow flip, and he blocked it. Mistimed that one a little bit. Didn't quite get out of the way. First couple of shots were great.
someone's got to attack. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, the longer that pushing rally went on, I felt like the less chance she had of winning the point. But I'm surprised he didn't attack. It's a good test for him to see how much right. he can get away with just pushing. That seems to have given him some new information. <laughs> I mean, I can see he is leaning a bit on his receive, so if she has the serve, I might try a long forehand, but it's got to be fast. Good pace okay. control. Those types of rallies will definitely not advantage her at all. Yeah, I think once she's on the defensive and he's attacking, it's pretty hard for her to control, let alone turn it around and try and counter. That's a good play. I mean, that slow backhand flick, it's spinning enough that he's blocking it and not countering. And then she kind of presses forward on the next ball. She should definitely do that more often. It's definitely important to change the pace. Great serve. <laughs> Didn't read that one very well. There it is again. Very nice. nice. Change in placement. Thought you were gonna jinx me again. <laughs> Let's see what it does here. Just after dropping two in a row. Yeah, she's got to be ready after minimally one or two. I don't think she's won a single all push point yet. I would try a long serve, see what she does with it. Down the line? No. Great. Just half long. Oh. Overheads. I mean, if she. If if I if I was playing against her and she was back, I mean, look, you can see that as soon as he touches the ball on his racket, she's moving into backhand push. So he could serve like half long no spin, and the ball will sit up every time. Right, she's not flipping any of those, but that that serve to his forehand has gotten gotten him every time. This time, there we go. yeah, better repositioning from Lee to make sure she's in position for the forehand. I w if I were her, I mean, in this situation, I would honestly be waiting the backhand loop. I feel like his serves in the most of these cross court, they're too long to flick. She has to loop that. Well, she's yeah, exactly. She's, she's pushing either them pushing every or second. flicking. And It would be such. It would make such a big difference if she looped them. Yeah, or if she's got the guts for it. Step around, and smack it down the line. Dollars. Rush that one just a little bit. Come on. Two games in the bag for Shahia Kadiri. That was good placement from him. It was an awkward back in on the far inside, two in a row, and then forces the issue. It makes her make a decision. Screws up her timing. We've seen. I've seen most of what we've seen from her is flipping and kind of backhand countering. I haven't seen her backhand loop against underspin at all, which is useful information for both of them. I mean, for him, he can pick on that side half long as much as he wants. Right, because she hasn't shown that she's going to do anything else with it, so why change? Yeah. 
but he's got to figure out how to better receive that the top spin. Yes. Yeah. Because at least she's found some, you know, some vulnerability. And if he doesn't I mean, the thing is, it's top spin every time. Right. So but he's clearly not reading it. Yeah. So if he if she can get him to a point, like mix it up to the point where he's guessing, this could really get interesting. Well, he's already guessing, and it's top spin every time. He's guessing <laughs> wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got to know that it's top spin by now. There we go. There we see a fault there for illegal serve. So I pe tell people at divisions and regional tournaments, if I if I see players that I know have illegal serves, I just tell them, hey, like be careful because at nationals, mm -hmm. if you make it there, they will call it. That was unfortunate, but I was just about to say to keep hitting it to the back inside is the way to go, uh, because he does seem to have a strong foreign mm. that he could he have could counter, counter with, exactly. Well, the thing I liked about that is that she actually attacked backhand off the serve. Oh. That's a nice angle there. Not sure if it was on purpose, but I'll take it. <laughs> the edge ball? <laughs> if I could do that on purpose, I'd be world champion. Oh, she's changing it up to a back inside. Wow. Probably changing the back end so to avoid the fault call. More fault calls on a foreign serve. Mm. But actually that kind of works in her favor. Because he's not comfortable with that angle that goes out to his forehand. Right. The serve that was working before that we saw the forehand shovel serve to his forehand, the back end serve is essentially the same thing, it just looks different. So this might be a fortunate Dula! adjustment for her. But she does have to be ready again to open with the back end when it comes, because it's going to come hot, like come back to high and kind of awkward. I don't know if you can hear it, but she's putting a lot of spin on those pushes. Like she's really digging in. See that forehand topspin serve to the short forehands. It was effective. She didn't happen to get the point, but it's putting it in a better position than some of the other serves. I like that she changed things up when she played the forehand and just kind of played a slow topspin angle instead and then stepped in to play backhand cross on the next one. Oh my goodness. Yours. Rush that return a little bit. He actually had more time than he thought he did. So I think what makes it would make things interesting if she can manage it is to throw in a couple of dead pushes too, because she's she's digging in real hard with those. And right. If, if he starts to adjust, just throw in a dead one. It'll, so it'll you can pop. get him to lift it off the end. Solid on the third ball attack. Right, this serve, this serve attack has been old reliable the whole time. No spin, pops it up, and then rips it basically wherever he wants. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She might want to be careful with that serve. The toss is a little questionable, but until they call it. Gary's on a one-way path to a potential 3-0 win here. And you see there he made the adjustment this time. It also helps being up. Yeah, 
have an underspin that one. Match point. Oh, what a nice wide ball there. Straight out to the forehand corner. It's pretty clear that she has issues with serves that are ambiguous looking, but for serves like that, that are clearly topspin, there's no guesswork. So there's a clear, proper reaction to it. Whereas like a half, a half dead ball, she's been pushing. And that's the match. 3-0 for Kadiri from the University of Virginia. 11-7, 12-10, 11-6. things up at one match each. UBC having one on the other table. Grace Zhang winning over Pratik Pandit. So shout out to our replay team in the media corner showing us highlights from, from this match. See which team match we get up here on this table next. We'll be right back with that in a minute. The next matchup, it's another 
co-ed clash between University of Virginia's Jia Lu and Lak Jung from UBC. That is weird feeling that Lak, Lak played for another team previously. I thought the name looked I thought familiar. Michigan, Michigan maybe? I feel like him and Elio were on the same team. I could be totally wrong. But his name, I definitely remember him last year. I could have sworn he was University of Michigan. Then again, they do have very similar shirts. <laughs> Here is short pips backhand, so we'll see how Lark handles the changes in pace and spin from the short pips backhand side. It seems pretty quick. He looks okay in the warm up. Usually, it's the slow short pips that, especially the male players, struggle more with. There are definitely a bunch of different varieties. Some some make the ball slower, some make them knuckle, and some actually produce their own spin. She yeah, played really outstandingly last year, I actually remember. I wasn't commentating the match, it was on the other table, but she was up 2-0 against Angie Tan, and then ended up losing in five. But she was playing so well in the first two games, and even throughout the rest of the match. And you can see on that back end there, it definitely knuckles a bit, and it, it really threw him off. So we'll see how he handles that change in, that change in speed. We're getting a showcase of like all the different servers here. So the umpire is reminding Luck that his hand must be flat palm must be flat for the ball toss and also the ball has to be towards the center of the palm you can't serve off your fingertips right because that imparts spin right. on the ball and part of the rules is when you toss it you can't you can't impart any spin on the ball yeah, you can see that disruptive pace ball drops low it's really hard to play with more power once you pick the ball up kind of at table height or lower. Nice hook serve there from Lou. Because this sport is so rhythm driven and a lot of a lot of the shots that you make are are kind of based on anticipating where the next one will be. So the second that you can mess with someone's timing by putting it somewhere they're not expecting. Yeah. It's a big advantage for you. It's like the rhythm equivalent of improvisational jazz. <laughs> I suppose you could it's say music, that. It's music, but it's all in notes that people don't like. <laughs> uh, Jia and the UVA team visited China fairly recently and kind of did a ping pong diplomacy tour pretty cool to see a college team doing that. Definitely a very cool opportunity for them. Definitely touched something. It might have gone straight down. Let's see if replay team can get that. Whoa, whoa. Okay. We'll <laughs> never know. <laughs> but the rule is, if you get a, if you clip the edge, so the the white, any part of the white border on the other side, it's your point. But if you hit the metal. Uh, it's considered on the side 
uh, and you lose. Soft net this game. They measured it up pretty thoroughly at the start of they the first match. They did. I heard the clunk yeah. when they <laughs> yeah. used the, the, the measuring stick. So that one again, rhythm is thrown off. Rhythm and timing is thrown off with the pips. There's that double net retrieve. Where did that one up? Yeah, I think if she's going to play slow with the pips, it has to be backhand side. Unless he's a little bit further back from the table, which he hasn't really been so far. That was that had some interesting English on it. Taste of her own medicine was all was shorter than she thought it was going to be. Dunks it in the net. Slightly off pace. Right, I was going to say first that was ball placing was really good. Right, that was a good thought, but I think this that one was that could have been a little it. punchier. Yeah, again, the softball anywhere in the forehand two-thirds, I think, is going to be almost ripe for the picking. For right, if he, can if he can square it up. Uh, in the beginning, she was kind of not quite catching the timing and the at the height where you normally would want to hit it, but he does seem to be timing them much better now. And so if... if I think she's going to go down the line to his back end with her pips. She's got to put a little more on it. She can't just block it over. Yeah. Use like a little like more the pace. Yeah, like that kind of inside out backhand that she played worked really well. Yeah, these rallies are good for a backhand to backhand, obviously. But He's going to be much less aggressive on his backhand side. I don't think he has like a big backhand hit that she needs to be particularly worried about. Right, it's the forehand. Yeah. And she needs to not back away because she's not going to out counter this guy. So if so she can go for bigger angles on the pit side. Honestly, if I were her, I'd be serving kind of shorter pendulum she's got it yeah she's got to jam him in that corner on the backhand and just vary the the spin up as much as she can and i think for him if he's going to spin spin balls like that he's got to be ready for the ball to come back weird otherwise you're going to see two of what you just saw like two whiffs Didn't quite get out of the way enough for that one. Lak Chang is second year international economics student at University of British Columbia. Originally from Suzhou in China. She is a senior studying commerce and from Virginia, hometown Fairfax, Virginia. Oh. Oh. 
that was a nice sequence there. So instead of spinning, spinning that one back to the back end, he kind of punched it over, which set up the next pop up. I don't know what that was for. <laughs> the mystery continues. I think the issue was the camera was a little bit in the field of play. Oh. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. I think I would have liked to have seen it play another forehand from that position. But you can definitely see that he's making a conscious effort to time the ball better instead of just swinging away. And mm. That definitely resulted in a longer rally for him. Kind of inside out, back in, receive. Comes back very awkward. Good serve. Good, serve. Good placement too. Kind of right to the wrist. Right there, actually. UBC are looking uh, pretty strong to take a 2 1 lead in the team match, so Gia is really needs to win this in order for her team to have a chance to play the doubles, unless things turn around on the other table. I think it's pretty likely UBC will lead 2 1. And so again, missed timing from uh, the backhand pips off of off of Gia's side. That was a good adjustment there. Didn't try to do too much with that with that backhand punch. It was an, it was enough. That, I feel, is the best setup for her. She could honestly switch that down the line straight away as well. If she really felt confident to apply more pressure to it. A little bit loose on the redrop. Managed to get the first one back. So good on Lack for staying in the point because a lot of times when you you rip a first one like that, you kind of assume it's a winner. And a lot of times you see it comes back and they go, oops. And he sends it long. And again, it's because of the mistiming from the pips. Just sat in the air a couple milliseconds longer than if it were inverted. Got it! Got it! Keep the things point. interesting here. Got it! Okay, it finished there. Chielu takes game two. You could see she just put a little bit more body weight into that backhand. Right. It's enough extra force, the return ball went long. So and for Locke, when, when stuff hits the fan, it's not so easy. Stuff. <laughs> this is a family program. <laughs> but when stuff hits the fan, it makes it much harder to, you know, it's not so easy to just say time, time the ball better. You're going to act on instinct and impulse, and if the ball's not where you are anticipating it to be, it's going to sail, or you're just going to miss it entirely. And so I think if he's going to hit it to her backhand, it's got, it should be slower and higher, because that 
high block kind of near your face is a really awkward shot to defend. Mm. Yeah, and also shot put players tend to, if you do loop it and it has a higher trajectory, if they get their racket on it, it's really hard for them to keep the ball low. It usually just kind of floats back at the same height. Right, so he's got to be ready for it to knuckle a bit, and he's got to step in closer than he, than he would otherwise. So let's see how they both adjust. there you can already tell the difference in the uh, bench vocalness and energy when you switch from doubles just to teams co-ed teams and women's teams are definitely the most fun events people get loud and rowdy it's a good time Having been, on average, in the oldest team the year that I played <laughs> in uh, here, last time in 2017, uh, we weren't too rowdy. Remind me what school you played for again? Fellow college. It was me, Timothy Wong, Lily Yip, and wow. Esteban Lozano. What a combination. It's an interesting combo. We did quite well. We came fifth. Okay, that is a little good. bit of a you know motley crew, but yeah, we came fifth. Um, a lot of the times when we were we were tied up with different schools, um, me and Tim would win the doubles. Um, I was playing in the fourth spot, so I won I think all but one of my singles across the entire season. Very nice. Um, yeah, and then me and Tim made I think we came fifth in the well we made quarterfinal with the doubles too. Jez looking pretty solid on the forehand counters. Just taking what's being thrown at her and exactly. adding interest. Right. And if she can take a little bit off too, that'll further mess with his timing. But sometimes in the rallies when they're intense and they're they're fast, you can't you don't have the opportunity to think that much. I think it's like a different level of skill to do all that stuff on purpose. That, that was good sequence there. Such a bold setup too. And she was 100% waiting for it, so that was very nice. Very nice. She's got a little bit of a haymaker going on there. That backswing is, that's kind of a little bigger than a lot of the female players play. That's dangerous. And so the vocalizing is really coming from her team. She's mm. pretty calm and collected. How how do you feel playing against players that don't that are not expressive? Does uh, it bother you? It depends. It depends how. There's a difference between like if I'm playing against a player that's unexpressive because they have nothing to cheer about, then I'm fine. Sure. If I'm playing against someone like Amy Wong, who <laughs> you understand that there's probably ten thousand things going through her head and she's just gonna pick you to bits with no expression on her face at all, then it's a little different. Um, yeah, it kind of depends how the match is going. And I mean, here the momentum's completely flipped, so I'm just curious like how much that's messing with Locke mentally. Because it can be tough playing against somebody who's got no expression whatsoever, and you're losing. Hmm. We just had an earthquake in New York. I don't need another one here. Not sure what that was. Oh, 
there's a lot of different sports going on in this University of Wisconsin Eau Claire venue. The facility is very impressive. They have a huge gym downstairs and like a whole kinesiology, kines, kinesiology. I'm not gonna try and pronounce I, it. I, y'all know what I mean. They have a big lab downstairs and it's an extensive facility, so it's very cool. KT. <laughs> there you go. match is about as close as it gets. UBC are up 2-1 in matches. So Chia has to win this match. But when you're up there, you can't really think that hard about it. You have to try really hard not to look next door, but inevitably your mind know. wanders. Yeah, she will know. Great table coverage. I'm not trying to do too much. That's a pretty bold strategy to play against someone whose forehand has as much power as luck. I mean, you can see how much body weight she's transferring into the right. ball. But that also clearly means that that's part of her, like it's a comfortable part of her game. That might also, at this stage of a, a really important game, that might also frustrate him too. When you're hitting like really powerful shots and the other person at the other end of the table is just one step ahead of you. Right, and in again. In position and blocking. And not looking terribly excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> There's the softer ball with the forehand again. Yeah, so it's a matter of whether the person who's not really showing much emotion, whether you're losing points against them because they're beating you, or whether you feel like you're losing points yourself. See, I think she's straying a bit from the plan. She's got to stick to his back end and go out wide to the forehand when she has the opportunity to. Because to your point, he does hit quite hard. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a fairly big forehand swing. Zhang taking a towel break. Jia not taking a towel break. So you definitely see the gears turning. And just the oh. way that you can see from the way that she swings, her forehands are not going to be very spinny. Just you can see by the way she holds her racket. Oh. And again, I think just playing a little bit too much up that center third of the table. You can see that she's trying to get him to move across with his backhand, but then not actually playing into the backhand corner. So she's letting him kind of She's kind of giving him options for which ball he wants to play forehand on. Right, and you can see he timed that one perfect. Yeah, I mean, the first ball that she got him to step across onto his forehand side playing backhand, she should have put the next ball straight into his backhand corner. But, but again, by like playing back there, then he just gets to move back to his comfortable space, get back on his forehand. Right. But sometimes, you know, when, when you're in the heat of the rally like you're really not thinking that much you're just like put your hand out where where the true but <laughs> that's also sometimes the difference between winning and losing absolutely <laughs> it's, it's a lot harder than it looks oh yeah game points for lak chung looking to get a 2-1 foothold here in this match 13 has the opportunity to take UBC over the line if he wins the match. Oh, she should have hit that one. I don't think that was the plan, hmm. but it still worked out anyway. 
So 14-12, pretty close there, but Lak Zhang getting the job done. Now one game away from sending UBC into the last 16 of the co-ed team event. So not sure if he was hoping she would flip that or something, because it clearly was not very spinny, but... That wasn't the last point. It was not. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Got distracted by the replay. But yeah, so <laughs> he, he served the no-spin serve. She popped it up, and then he pushed it back. So I don't, I don't think that's what the plan was. Because um, typically, if you're going to serve something dead, your plan is not to right. push the next one back. But it worked out. Definitely had some nice rallies that last game. See if they can replicate for this for this next set. No hesitation whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, for her, that's really the last thing that you want to see. That's a sign that your, whatever tactics you've chosen for the point or execution of. And she gives him one right back. Caught him leaning the wrong way. Get it on replay. So yeah, the first, first shot in the back end was kind of awkward. Messed up his footwork to force him to force the error on the far inside. So Jez already burned her timeout. You only get one per match, so she's got to come out strong out of the gate. You can see Lock is being more aggressive on the receive. Yeah, that's one of the first times we've seen him step around straight off the receive. So having a one game cushion will help. Oh, change in timing. So you can see he's way out in front of it. By the time he swung, it was already halfway to the floor. Same thing. Missed time that one. So if you're a lock and you lose the next point to me, do you burn your time out or you try and muddle? I think I'd probably be okay. It's pretty early in the game to use a timeout. Ooh, that has some very weird English on it. Go! 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 I think she surprised herself that she made that one. Yeah, you can see there from this angle Whenever he's hitting the ball and she's playing back in the middle, I think in order to be able to control the ball and put the ball on the table, it just ends up going back to where he's hitting from. It's difficult to break out of that pattern. But if she wants to kind of neutralize his forehand after the first ball, she has to move it from... Definitely don't want to hit two shots back to the same place. Wow, Five, did that? Four. That yeah, roll for him, it did, right? It, it was did. A net, net edge. Yeah, it definitely feels like she's reacting really more than anything, so mm. it, there's not a lot of control over where her placement is. It's just as long as it goes back over the net. Short pips loops are really awkward. And very effective. Oh, one thing that I would say that's been most difficult for him is 
I feel like the more that he's raised the bar in the rallies, the better she's played as well. So it's kind of like he's lifted his quality. I think he's been playing much better in the rallies. Case in point. <laughs> so the, the more he throws into the rally, she's just kind of hanging with him. We saw a bunch of these points in the last game too. And they actually tended to benefit her, but he came away with that one. Nets keeping things interesting here. Oh! Unforced error there. Put away from Lakjung. And a timeout comes from the University of Virginia now. I thought they used their timeout. Is the T on the scoreboard for timeout used or timeout remaining? <laughs> I th maybe no. I th yeah, it's a, it's saying the timeout call is from. I know the umpires keep track of it, so maybe the digital scoreboard's wrong. Potentially, but if this is a little puzzling, if this is if this is UBC's timeout, I don't follow. But maybe it's not. They definitely said Virginia. In any I don't event, know, I'm confused now. In any event, Five. either way, it's kind of strange timing for UVA's timeout, too. It's a little mm. late. late, chink. Six. match points for Lak Jung and for the UBC team. I also didn't quite follow the serve anyway. If anything, I would have served that to the back inside, not the forehand, but one match point save. Counter doesn't make it. Lak Chang earns himself the win. Three games to one. UBC win three matches to one. And it's UBC that are going to advance into the co ed team's round of 16. So the next matchup on this table is going to be between. The University of California, Berkeley against NYU. And that's in the women's team event. The four versus five seed in what should be a quarterfinal match. So we'll be right back with that match in probably a few minutes. But right now it's UBC that goes through over the University of Virginia.
And here we are, halfway through uh, the latter end of day number one of the 2024 Collegiate National Table Tennis Championships. You are watching the women's uh, event, it's the NYU versus California. I'm Joe Wells, alongside me is Justin D'Antonio. Justin, you got a chance to see some great matches earlier. This is, uh, you know, really day one kind of sets the tone for what we expect to see throughout the rest of the week. Why don't you tell the people kind of a, a little bit about what you uh, noticed earlier as you were uh, spent a lot of time on table number one. Yeah, a lot of people settling into their style, starting a little bit tentative, uh, and then, you know, a lot of really competitive matches. I think maybe five out of my six matches earlier went to five games. And uh, yeah, a lot of big forehands on the, the co-ed and men's side, and a lot of big backhands on the women's side. Uh, good variety of styles. We had some shoppers out there. Uh, so yeah, very excited to see everybody enjoying, enjoying our uh, host venue this year. University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. We were here seven years ago. That was actually my first uh, time attending the national champs. So it's it's cool to be back, and I'm enjoying commentating so far. Yeah, earlier uh, we're now in the women's team's quarters, but we got to see both of these teams uh, with respective pairings in women's doubles earlier. And, and earlier, uh, Lasagna Marutha Panyan uh, from Cal Berkeley, she is going to look to establish everything for her big forehand. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be a lot of blocking, counter blocking off the backhand side, uh, but she is not uh, trigger 
shy at all. She wants to step around, hit big forehands. A lot of times they're more so forehand drives than they are loops. Uh, so we're going to look to see a lot of that in singles. She's going to have a little bit more freedom. Uh, it's primarily in doubles, everything was just really geared uh, around her ability to step around and hit uh, big forehands. Absolutely. It really is a whole different beast, singles versus doubles. Uh, I like that they put the doubles event first since it's not something that the players really directly quali qualify to nationals for. It's kind of just a good opportunity with uh, a little less pressure to get used to the courts, how the the uh, the flooring plays, how the table plays. Our sponsor Yola. This is, I believe, our first time having the Yola tables for champs. I don't think we had Yola tables in Texas. So it has been some time since we actually used uh, the Yola table. Uh, quite quite some time, a little bit before your time. Uh, we had the pleasure of being able to use the Yola tables, and we're really uh, excited and thankful for their support for this year. Um, Yola just makes a really amazing product that a lot of people out there in the table tennis community are very familiar with. And they have a lot of great things that they're doing on the horizon. I mean, everyone really right now would try to associate them with pickleball, but they're really still heavy in table tennis and have some great things coming up in the future. Absolutely. It is... Uh it is hard to go anywhere not hearing about pickleball. I opened up the first page of our uh, our little welcome book for the tournament, and uh, you see Yola on there um, with Ben Zhang and uh, Lily Zhang. But yeah, I, I got a chance to play on these tables a little bit. I really like how they play. Definitely my first time hoping to get to play on them more. Go. And a really tight part of the match so far, just kind of feeling each other out back and forth. Anastasia Wong, she uh, got off to a really good start. She didn't over hit, do too much. She was able to control a lot of the point off that side where she feels out of the two a little bit more comfortable with the counter of uh, the Marathon Panyan. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, again, it's still really early. Um, and it looks like she has a lot of control off the forehand side as well. Um, some really good control, deep topspin. You know, nothing overpowering, but just a really effective ball. Yeah, I love both their styles. Um, just absolute powerhouses. Neither of them particularly uh, good movers, uh, but you know they just have absolutely super low, crisp, flat uh, kill shots off both wings. Uh, used to, um, I would say, controlling points most when they're on the offensive, and so it's probably going to end up being a battle here of who can take that offensive rain and run with it. Oh, the player from Cal Berkeley showing exactly what we're talking about when she has a chance or opportunity, that forehand is just something lethal. Uh, I think really a lot of times if you do get her stretched outside wide, uh, that's when the recovery portion uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. But other than that, uh, it's going to be a really tight match. really crazy uh, the power these two get out of their forehand. I, I, I don't even know how you have time to react. Just so low, so flat. So scary. I'm glad I'm over here and not on the court. That is the exact time of exchange that uh, Lavanya really wants to get into. It's a quick off the bounce on the backhand side where it wasn't too much topspin that she was hitting. 
to be able to drive that ball back, but again, really opening up the angle for the forehand. And just misplays the service return there, unfortunately. I'm just uh, opening up the schedule here, trying to recall. Is this a round robin stage? <laughs> quarters. Okay, so this is the quarters of the tournament here for the women's team side. We've got the five seed versus the four seed. Yeah, and it looks like women's uh, team side of things is shaping up exactly as you expected, where the top, you know, four to six seeds are going to be right there at the end of it. Uh, we are very interested to see what happens on the men's teams. There are some some of the men's teams that qualify that are missing uh, their top player, um, so maybe their roster is not going to really indicate where their seed is in the event. But nonetheless, they qualified. Uh, with that roster, but I, I know that there's some people that are uh, missing from certain clubs, and that's going to be interesting to see what type of lineups these co-ed teams put out there. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a chess match for those people as they try to fill uh, a void, right? There's no more guaranteed points when you throw your, your top player out there, depending on where you put them in, in the lineup, there's a good opportunity for you to win the point, but uh, for some of those teams that are going to be missing their top players for one reason or another, that's going to be a challenge for them. And Lavanya Marasampanyan takes game number one, 13-11. She did bounce back there as Anastasia Wong of NYU got off to a really great start. Um, but the player from Cal was able to kind of come back and find a little bit of rhythm. Uh, and that's the one thing that Anastasia Wong does not want to do. She does not want to allow... Um, Marathon Ponya to get in any kind of groove, a back and forth, a quick exchange of forehands because I feel like that's advantage UC Berkeley when it comes to that point. Good to see Coach Yanjun Gao over there uh, trying to pump up and uh, recenter his player, Anastasia Wong. He's such a fundamental uh, pillar of the NYU program. Program's very lucky to have him. He's here every year supporting the team. Both the co-ed and women's side must be tough when both your co-ed and women's sides are so strong and sometimes they're playing at the same time. taking a, a backhand shot block, almost a redirect. She just missed that. But again, she pretty much holding her position in court, wants to really move the ball. As soon as she gets opponent stretched out wide, that's when she's going to look to step around and hit forehand. So it's going to be interesting to see if Amy Wong can really get her off of that block. Stage getting very low for that forehand. Tons of loop on it. Just couldn't uh, control the spin and get it back in play. Uh, Lavanya there. Seeing Anastasia play through the middle of the court a lot more, trying to perhaps avoid some of those wide cross-court rallies that have been getting her on the stretch, getting her off balance. Just 
a really nice forehand flick there from Anastasia Wong of NYU. Again, I feel like if she's able to get Marathar Panyan off of her, her spot, her comfort zone, controlling everything from the middle of the table, she stands a much better chance. question about the score right now. Uh, the umpires are looking to guidance from the players. The players are definitely calling it. Um, it's a tough situation there. There's not really a... Uh, a replay type system where you could go back quickly and count every point. Uh, and you know what? It is tough to get over something in your head like that in the middle of a game. You know, now one of them might feel like you're cheated the rest of the game. But that's part of any tournament here. You have to get over those little things. If, if it compounds and it affects the next five points, then that becomes a much bigger deal. But if you can just get back into your head, then at the end of the day, it's only a one point swing. You can still win this game, win this match easily. Awesome creativity off the backhand of Martha Panya there, where she did a open for a backhand roll push, kind of the outside of the court. Then she followed it up with a backhand chop block towards the center of the table. Uh, so she's definitely trying to get creative off the backhand side and not just allow uh, her opponent to feel like she's in some kind of rhythm. Obviously, Anastasia Wong uh, has a very uh, impactful and aggressive forehand in her own right. They both just play so fast. Uh, I think the big thing I'm seeing right now is Lavanya just redirecting the ball, uh, consistently controlling maybe not the pace, but where the ball is going. She just seems very centered, and uh, Anastasia's hopping around trying to keep up. That's certainly a backhand that Anastasia Wong would want back. She had a really good uh, cut on the ball. <coughs> it looks like they're going to go uh, to the towel break, which is smart. There's no need to rush. Uh, she is down one, one game to love, but uh, there's definitely a window here for her to be able to win game number two and tie it up. And then uh, com competitive table tennis for those of you who are maybe a little less experienced. <laughs> We do towel breaks every six points, and the, the third towel break at 9-9 nine, nine or 10-8, uh, ten, ten, normally when the, the points sum to 18, generally a pretty critical one towards the end of the game. That was a really good constructive point there at the end. Anastasia Wong takes game number two, 11-9.
We are now knotted at one all here in this women's quarterfinal, NYU versus UC Berkeley. And we're seeing a lot of the same here so far, Justin, and these ladies are starting off the points. Who's going to open up with the attack first? And then it becomes a very quick exchange uh, back and forth with not one wanting to budge off their spot for the forehand. The beautiful backhand topspin rolls uh, to down the line there from Anastasia Wong of NYU. Yeah, I'm impressed she made that angle. She kind of made space out of nothing there. Beautiful ball there from Lavanya Marathapanyan. When she has time, the backhand is very, very effective. And again, she is definitely not shy about ripping that forehand. Uh, she can take it in any direction. A lot of times we've seen her preferring to drive cross court, uh, but definitely just missing that forehand long. But again, if she, if she sees a window, to take a cut on the forehand, she is going to take it. Yeah, these players both very consistently commit to power. Uh, you see some players where they'll sort of acknowledge with their movement um, and their shot choice. sort of acknowledge with their movement and their shot choice when they're out of position or when there's an attack. But, you know, if one of these two hits hard, the other one just hits harder. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of this back and forth, which is why it's very tight because the, in their style of play, they are somewhat similar uh, where neither really has a a huge backhand, more of a counter blocking, uh, kind of punching style off the bounce. But it's really when they get to the forehand is where they excel. And right now it's going to be a matter of who can get to the forehand first and who can be more consistent with, you know, landing the big shots. I'm not sure whose baby we had on the screen. Very cute though. Future champion right there. Future collegiate champion was on the, on the uh, screen. This is some very high quality early exposure to the sport. So you hear a lot of applause here. You obviously see high, high uh, levels of table tennis, but for me, before I actually came to nationals, I just did not realize how huge this event is. We have over 250 players here, 30 or 40 courts. Uh, it's massive. Yeah, the, the level of play here is just grows year after year. I mean, you gotta remember that there, again, there are some teams that are without their top male player, uh, meaning they, they for a number of reasons, just could not attend the championships. So in, in actuality, the mid side of things is, is lacking some depth, if you will, that they're accustomed to having. Uh, but a lot of these players are either former or current national team members uh, representing a, a, my a myriad of countries uh, here this weekend. And we're just very fortunate to see a lot of them on display. Um, you know, a lot of times the, the good thing is, is that we see a lot of uh, the same schools that just find a way year after year to remain competitive and recruit new players. And then, you know, every so often we'll also have some sleeper schools, schools that are new, uh, that we did not know they had that level of talent on their team. 
Um, and then the goal is that hopefully we're able to retain them or keep them year after year and it doesn't just kind of fall off or die down as certain athletes graduate, uh, which happens to a lot of really good programs. Um, I was talking to a school earlier actually and that, that one very thing happened to them where they lost some of their top players, uh, they lost some of their leadership for their program, uh, and then that means that they, uh, as, a, as an organization or as an institution, uh, just didn't have a presence in collegiate table tennis. But they're back and they're here enjoying themselves. Uh, they had a, a couple people qualify uh, on the individual side of things, singles and doubles. Uh, but as a co-ed team, they, they uh, did, not, did not qualify. So I know that they're looking to build uh, off of that for years to come. Anastasia Wong takes game number three, 11-6. I think right now uh, it's going to be up to Martha Ponyan to get some cheap points and not have to really get into those battles because right now it looks like she's she's the one coming out on the short end of that quick exchange off the table, uh, particularly on the backhand side of things. And then when she does get a step around for the forehand, she just hasn't been connecting. Uh, so right now we're hoping that out of this timeout, we know that the game plan is not going to change a whole lot, uh, but she just has to land more of the forehands. do believe rating wise Anastasia was the uh, projected winner of this match but certainly not out of range for uh, Lavanya to battle it out and make this even closer bring it to five Those are the points that Anastasia Wong is winning. Um, again, that backhand to backhand exchange. She's just a touch more consistent with it. And then she has the ability to, again, be aggressive off the forehand side. It was a beautiful uh, forehand open court flick there. And very smart by uh, Lavanya Martha Panya to take a timeout. She does not want to dig herself too much of a hole here. She already trails 2 1 in this open singles match of the women's quarterfinal team event. It is tough early on in a game trying to gauge when it's worth taking that timeout again. Each player gets one timeout per game. We're very early on in this game, but uh, Anastasia could really run away with that momentum quickly starting 3-0. So maybe killing some of Anastasia's <coughs> momentum, maybe helping Lavanya build some of her own or change her game plan a little bit. Primarily a strategic play uh, there with that timeout. Very solid backhand rally there, just patient uh, and preventing Anastasia from really attacking in any way. And that's when you can see that the player from NYU is obviously feeling a little bit more comfortable because she tried to uh, roll uh, a little bit more versus just settling for uh, kind of a backhand, uh, controlled backhand. Just an unlucky down the line uh, ball that caught the uh, edge there, stayed in, and Martha Ponyan really couldn't handle much of it. It's uh, she trails 6-2 here, and 
when things are going your way, Justin, things are just going your way. I mean, she just pretty much stuck her paddle out there and uh, was able to push that ball back down the line. It is impressive, uh, though, how much preparation and reading of play can make things that look lucky, maybe to us, uh, look easy and like, you know, they have luck on their side all the time. Because I can tell you what, if I put my paddle there to return Lavanya's backhand 20 times in a row, I'd miss 20 times in a row. Yeah, and at this point, it does look like the wheels are just kind of slowly but surely falling off as she misses serve there, trails 3-9. Huge rip there, just painting the edge of the table. She took one crack at it and couldn't put it away. Lavanya got a block on it, and then she just adds another six inches and probably another 20 miles an hour to the shot and crushes it out of the, the court. be waiting on the overall match results coming up here momentarily. We need to see what happened in the uh, second singles, Kylie Lamb versus Alakasia Chin. And Anastasia taking that last game 11-4 to win the match 3-1. Again, you are watching day one of the 2024 Collegiate National Table Tennis Championships. I'm Joe Wells. Alongside me is Justin D'Antonio. Justin, one of our many uh, splendid volunteers that comes here year after year. He's also uh, a regional member where he oversees the events uh, in his local community. He's working really hard there to try to keep uh, the efforts going strong uh, as we have a good relationship with some of the venues uh, out of his region and hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue to have events in that region. Uh, it's so critical that we're able to have good venues for all these athletes to come and compete at to eventually make their way uh, to the pinnacle of uh, college table tennis which is the national championship. Looks like we have a true, a true setup happening out on uh, table number two where it is uh, Hannah Saib versus Sayu Zing. deep run here for UC Berkeley in the women's teams. Uh, last year, UC Berkeley did produce the men's singles champion, Nikhil Kumar, uh, who today is out of town for the newly founded uh, USA uh, Major League Table Tennis, uh, Professional Table Tennis League but don't worry he will be here tomorrow and sunday for the co-ed and the men's singles competitions saw uh, Tiffany Lamb of NYU uh, wield her team to a doubles victory out on table number table number two. Very solid, strong overall player. Was really impressed uh, 
with with her uh, doubles prowess. A really smart player that she was actually kind of coaching her uh, teammate through some of that match as they were matched up against a, a team that actually uh, put, a, put a player out that had tips on one side. And uh, that's obviously a very interesting uh, dynamic that happens when we're talking about table tennis, especially doubles with the throws off the timing and the rhythm of everything. Uh, a lot of moving in and out of the table. So having a uh, defender on the table uh, actually gets a pretty interesting dynamic to things. This match is underway. Tiffany Lamb of NYU versus Cindy Young of UC Berkeley. Tiffany Lamb, a biology major and freshman at NYU, making this her first year of collegiate table tennis. Hoping for more great things from her on this team. Yeah, and as we can see, she's just out to a really very large lead in game number one. Uh, it's clear that NYU's used some uh, roster strategy here where they pit, put some of their, their uh, top players that they elected to move one of their top two players down to the third singles, which is very much so within the rules to do, is you have to submit a roster uh, prior to. Um, and it does not matter where you stack those players, but it will impact what happens with them in the doubles. Um, as your number one, you will end up having to play doubles. Uh, so right now, Tiffany Lamb on this table is the stronger of the two pairings. Uh, Cindy Young is, is obviously um, the third or fourth player on the UC Berkeley lineup. Uh, so on paper, obviously, advantage NYU as Tiffany Lamb takes number one, uh, game number one, handsomely 11-1. And rating-wise in the NCPTA system, this isn't a big surprise here. We do have a deficit of about 700 rating points. I've seen crazier things happen. Sometimes in the first year, the rating doesn't calibrate right with the new player, but so far it's looking like these. Uh, this deficit is pretty spot on, matching what we expected uh, on paper. And NYU right now in this team match which consists of four singles matches head-to-head, -head, is up 2-0. So they only need to win one of these two matches currently going on on courts one and two. Uh, they either 
the third or fourth singles. So looking like NYU has this in the bag with the way this match is going, unless things change. A good effort there from the player from Berkeley, uh, Cindy Ying. She obviously has some training, and, but uh, just slightly outmatched here. I would like to see her, um, if she continues to struggle a little bit off the backhand, if that's not landing, maybe somehow she can find a way to step around uh, and take forehands that she can. Obviously, you know, there again, seeing a little bit of a, a misread on the return of serve, that's a, a challenging thing for her as well. Um, but that's where the point kind of begins and unfortunately sometimes it's also where it ends. It is tough in a situation like this. Uh, Cindy is going to want to uh, rev, rev the engine a little bit. She's going to want to play harder shots, faster shots, better play shots, because she feels like her, her default gear, gear is not powerful enough to uh, bring her opponent out of her comfort zone. But that's going to lead to even more errors for her. And there she hit just a really great shot that uh, Tiffany was able to get back and, and she kind of had to laugh at herself at, at the attempt to even get that ball back over the net just because you know, it's like a question of, well, what more can I do, right? And I hit my best shot and it came back with, you know, without uh, a whole lot of effort. So. But the great thing about it is, is that for players like Cindy, she's on a great program. Right? So UC Berkeley women's team and their co-ed team, they are consistently qualifying for nationals because year in and year out, they produce some really good players, particularly from the West Coast. Uh, so she has an opportunity to, you know, grow from here. She has something to kind of look forward to the next time she attends nationals. You know, she's walking away from this saying, hey, we made it to nationals and we did really good. Uh, but I definitely you know, have some things to improve on and, and a lot of these athletes they walk away from the summer even there just thinking that point was over and not realizing that Tiffany Lamb is fast enough to recover for that ball. Um, so it's those kind of things that she just kind of has to uh, take and really grow from. That's a very solid counter attack there by Tiffany though. Potential for growth here, absolutely. And I think because of being on an established program uh, like this one, UC Berkeley, she knows that even though this is a tough match, her role on this team is very important. And you never know until you step out onto the court what's going to happen. Her opponent's team could have also stacked, and there could have been less of a ratings deficit because uh, the the rosters are submitted anonymously. So the opponent knows what players are on uh, your roster, but they don't know which of those eight players you choose to put in the four available positions for any head-to-head -head match. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, with the depth of a lot of these teams, some of them are going to elect to put out their, their strongest players. Now that we're all the way into the quarterfinals, there's not going to be a whole lot of opportunity for some of those lower level or, um, you know, number six and seven players uh, on a roster, really. Um, right now you're rolling out your, your A lineup one through four. And again, where you put them is going to be the question. Uh, whether or not you put the number one player at the number three single spot, something you can absolutely do, or if you know that you're going to need them for doubles, 
uh, you want to make sure that you're getting your best team uh, built and putting your best duo or combination into the doubles if you feel like that's really the only chance that you're going to win if you try to play a team straight you know head to head one through four versus one through four some some teams are going to lose right away and a lot of these teams are going into these matches knowing that the only way they stand a chance to win is the fourth a uh, force a fifth and deciding doubles match and that's where everything kind of like leverages off a little bit and these girls give themselves a little bit more of a chance to to win and get one step, step closer to this national championship You see Tiffany, or rather, you see Cindy there, just pumping, getting herself psyched up. Psyched up. She is still not giving up on this match. Definitely noticed that she's trying to be a little bit more aggressive, um, and I feel like that's you know one of the ways that she's uh, gonna win is that she just has to hit more. She has to hit, just hit a lot more shots. Uh, than what we had been seeing uh, in those first two games. She just wasn't really connecting with a whole lot. Uh, there was a lot of errors forced on the backhand side, but uh, she's got to a good start, I would say, for sure, in this uh, third game. This is a really tough matchup. Uh, definitely a really tough matchup for Cindy, but it's nothing she hasn't seen before. Being on a strong team like UC Berkeley, she has players of this level that are at her disposable disposal to to train against, and that means she can feel less out of her element and continue to look for openings because sometimes all you need is one opening, one weakness in the game that you can pick at and chip away points on. And you see, you see Cindy there shifting out wide too quickly and getting off balance not being able to recover for the next shot setting up Tiffany for an easy put away just a really strong forehand loop cross court you know, not too much power, but a whole lot of spin, Justin, and that's a really difficult ball to uh, keep down. There you have it. Tiffany Lamb of NYU closes it out. 11-3, game number three. Clinching the tie for NYU. They will go on into the semifinal with we're waiting on the winner of that as there's some matches going on on outside courts. Congratulations to the women of UC Berkeley. Another great run at this championships, but they will fall in the quarterfinal matchup. You know, they were obviously national champions in previous years, so for the uh, a national champion to go down to the quarters, that, you know, it's almost like we were back in March Madness where we saw a lot of upsets in basketball. Uh, but when you got to the women's Final Four, it's almost like you expected, you know, who you expected to be there is going to be there, and right now NYU is looking like one of those teams that we s we've seen that they are expected to be there, and they're going to be now in uh, the Final Four. Uh, for Justin D'Antonio, I'm Joe Wells. We'll be taking a break and coming back here shortly, watching day one of the 2024 Collegiate National Table Tennis Championships.
joined here with Daniel. All right, what team do you represent? Uh, UC Berkeley. UC Berkeley. So what? And we are here back in the men's co-ed division. It's going to be University of Michigan versus Columbia. We had a chance to see Emil Sosis of Michigan playing doubles earlier. Columbia played out on table number one. I know that uh, just before these uh, warm-up sessions started, both players were feeling each other out, trying to get an understanding on what's on the uh, equipment, which we oftentimes don't see that much anymore at, at a very high level as to what's on the other side of the bat. But sometimes uh, people do feel the need just to to got to get an understanding of what they're going to experience right away without having to think about it. And I'm pretty sure um, that the blue side of the player, um, Zhao Zhang of Columbia, um, that is either short or medium pips. Lil Sosis is going to play with uh, inverted smooth on both sides. So I'm very curious to see uh, if Zhao Zhang has reverse pendulum um, backhand or if he's going to redirect and just kind of adjust. Um, really exciting to see. Especially with the uh, the idea that he does have uh, a variation of tips and it looks like he does warm up uh, in traditional pin hold format. Um, but if there was any uh, ability to do reverse, I'd be really excited to see him do him with his tips. And it's a very good chance that he's might not he might not do reverse. Um, pin hold but he could twiddle meaning that and at some point in the rally or an exchange he'll twiddle from the black side which is smooth inverted uh, to the blue side which I believe is uh, short or medium tips and for those players who may not be as familiar with the sport you may notice that Zhao Zhang right now warming up on the backhand side with that black rubber that does not necessarily mean that's the side he hits with in the match it is a courtesy uh, to warm up uh, your opponent with the inverted rubber rubber to allow your opponent to get into a rhythm with a consistent spin coming back Columbia University Ivy League in the city of New York uh, not always one of the schools that is able to make it out to national championships. Sometimes difficulties with funding, but always a strong team in divisionals and regionals. Yeah, I would really I'd love to have uh, Stephanie in, uh, sitting in with us as uh, Columbia is our alma mater. 
I know that she's really excited to see them back on the, uh, at nationals. Uh, an outstanding player in her own right when she was competing at the collegiate level. We'll see if Sosa's to serve. And there you can see the the, um, the experience and uh, the advantage that Sosa's is going to try to exploit uh, attacking or hitting deep into uh, the backhand corner of Zhang uh, from Colombia. That's, that's obviously the first and obvious thing you would want to do uh, in this match. And as soon as he gets them pent out wide enough, I do expect to see Sosa's uh, roll back out to the opposite court. You see Zhang really punching with that uh, classic penhold backhand there. Almost. Uh, great power there. Way to keep a get a wheel on the defensive. A lot of power off the racket right now on both wings of Zhang. The question will be how much variety does Allele or does Zhang have and can he can Allele find a way to capitalize on that backhand corner. Alil, the captain of the University of Michigan table tennis uh, club, and or rather the president, was not able to attend the regional tournament, but still behind the curtains, supporting. <coughs> and obviously, you know, when you're a traditional pin holder, uh, like John is, and there they know that people are coming for that backhand. So a lot of times, it allows them to set up and anticipate um, sooner than most because that is the side that they don't really get to attack on. The one thing I'm very curious to see is whether he's going to be able to uh, roll over and um, get Sosa's moving out wide to the forehand uh, to open up his attack, um, especially. Um, given that that is the uh, attack with the Sosa's backhand side. Really explosive on the forehand side when he gets an opportunity there. I have a feeling we're not going to see Alil playing much to the forehand wing of Zhang unless he's sure it's an opportunity for a winner. So Zhang's forehand is not, I wouldn't consider it powerful or big and explosive. It's just really souped up with a lot of spin. It is deep, so it can be very... Uh, very effective there. He had a big step around there, but a majority of the forehands we've seen have all been um, heavy topspin. And he really had to um, extend out, get good racket head speed to hit that inside out forehand. Again, that's just a really tough serve to return. Um, Beautiful motion there on the uh, forehand. He disguised it a little bit as underspin, but really came around it, so it ended up being more uh, side spin, if you will, Justin. 
and you will see a lot of these players mask the uh, spin on their serve by continuing the follow through after the stroke in a different direction than they were swinging at the moment of contact. Kind of smart to just slow down take a moment to get himself to the finish line to go to the towel without rushing. Tosis takes game number one, 11 9. So a little bit of cat and mouse back and forth there. We saw Leo Sosa started off well. Zhang settled into the match. Sosa closes it out, 11 9 in game number one. Out on table number two, it looks like Michigan leads in that as well. Uh, comfortably winning game number one and has a large lead in game number two, 8 1. It's a good, good possibility that Columbia moves some things in their roster to try to hide their top seed, maybe move the top seed down to the third or fourth singles, uh, which would extend this match uh, down to uh, doubles. Because uh, on paper, the numbers stack up in Michigan's favor as they are the eighth seed taking on the number 17 seed. We saw Ilio during the break uh, talking with one of the other co-ed team members, Elin Dong, who had a great run last year in the men's singles competition. Elin Dong, a backhand tipped player. And we expect to see him playing in one of the other matches uh, in this head-to-head. Looks like he's third singles. Kind of disappointed. Uh, I haven't seen as much of uh, the twiddle on Xiao Zhang's backhand side where he would take those blue tips. Uh, he's still just really electing to drive off the backhand and really step around and try to hit a bigger forehand. And there was a, a great example of exposing the backhand out wide from Zhang. A little Sosa and steps around. It's a really big forehand out cross court. Just too, mu too much for uh, Zhang to handle. And even then, a little Sosa, as you can see in the replay, um, really just controlled the backhand uh, back perfectly to the weaker side of Zhang. Uh, even though it wasn't a, a really fast or a spinny shot, he just put it in the right position.
there you have it. Uh, Zhao just overcooking a forehand a little bit. Obviously, it's one that he wants back as he started off uh, with an opportunity there. Had a slight lead, but we're now tied at four all here in game number two. Sosa's to serve. And that's for sure one that uh, Leo Sosis wants back. You're not really going to get too many returns that are just sitting high up in the middle of the table. Nice reaction there to a sort of change up serve down the middle by Zhao. And Zhao being really smart, just kind of taking his time. He does have a slight lead, doesn't want to rush this. Just showing a really quick explosive uh, forehand off the bounce there of his own. No hesitation. Little fist pump for the uh, exclamation part to the forehand. That moment, it does sound like he might have used the uh, the blue pot, the blue side, the short pips. It did sound a little funnier off the paddle, uh, Justin. It's uh, again, I know that we've talked about it earlier. Right. Just a beautiful, explosive point there from. Sosis, as he got really low on the forehand, was able to stay in this point. Got caught out wide there. It's a, it's an amazing side spin on the forehand. Yes, Xiao uh, has said in the uh, the interview. Uh, survey for the players he does prefer to primarily play that inverted traditional style and he really enjoys the the art and challenge of putting that tra traditional style to the test against modern players well it's also a lot of work physically you know when you're kind of having to lean in on that side it's a lot more footwork as well because um, your position, your angle, the racket has to be um, on point because, you, again, you know you're going to get a lot of balls going into that backhand corner. And Zhao is certainly working here with a game point opportunity or rather four of them in this second game. there by Alil, but now the tougher prospect of winning two points on Zhao's serve to stay in this second game. And Zhao takes the second game, 11-8 to even it up at 1-1. One, one. As you said, Joe, Zhao definitely working with heavy footwork to compensate and set himself up to be the aggressor, specifically with that powerful pen hold forehand. Certainly not moving like it, but uh, Zhao is, I can't officially confirm this, but he is 
very likely the oldest player competing in this tournament. Last year, he was the second oldest player. PhD student at Columbia, been playing the sport for 30 years. Yeah, that's one of those things when you think about it and you get up in your years that Zhao might be one of the few taking an ice bath at the end of each day of this competition. And as we continue to go on day after day, these days just feel like they're getting longer and longer. Um, you know, obviously the first day, uh, it's a lot of matches because we're dealing with early rounds. But as we continue to get it advances, not only is it a lot of matches, but the matches just get more and more tough uh, as the level of play continues to increase. Yes, and I'm not, I'm not sure what other events Zhao is playing in. I did, uh, did you happen to see if he was in the doubles, the men's doubles? I do believe I saw him earlier in men's doubles uh, for Colombia, and um, he still will have to double check, but he very well so might have be in singles as well, um, which he would end up playing that on um, Saturday afternoon and, and into Sunday. Certainly a long weekend if you're competing in three different events for some of the women. Could be four events, right? Absolutely. Awesome backhand rally there. Ending with an error on Zhao's side. Trying to change it up and redirect to the forehand. Looks like Cortu did indeed finish uh, with a victory for University of Michigan, putting them up 1-0 in this head-to-head. -head. starts there with the serve Justin just a beautiful deceptive serve to the middle of the table Real Sosis allows uh, gets strong to pop that ball up and he deposits that easy forehand cross court serving can be a huge advantage with both of these players styles no qualms with putting away any eyeball placement wise or power wise from any any corner of the table. Commentators curse there as Zhao misses a a big meatball down the middle of the court. Justin gets his right back there as he takes a forehand down the line that Sosis was not able to defend.
If Sean gets one more point here, you've got to think timeout for a little Sosa of Michigan. Really appreciate that uh, change up at an opportune moment going for the short forehand serve. So just a really uncanny ball there from Alil Sosis where he kind of pops up this heavy top spin ball to the corner. The Jong really not expecting that ball to come down, but as soon as it did, it took just a huge hop forward. That's a high IQ defensive play there by Ilio. Things are getting pretty tight here right now at the moment. Justin, nobody wanting to bend. It's one all. Now we're tied up at seven apiece here in game number three. For Columbia, they know that they uh, need to get on the board as they, they lost the number two singles. Uh, Ho Yu Kung defeats Han Shao. Alexander Sai of Michigan taking on Zeri Chan of Columbia. Sosis takes game number three, 11 8. A duplicate of the second game, just in the opposite direction. Advantage Michigan right now. Again, Michigan leads one match to nothing in this co ed uh, quarterfinal. It's the number eight seed Michigan facing off against the number 17 seed Columbia. Next up here will be the third singles for this match. Yilin Dung of University of Michigan versus Jerome Villar or Vayar. University of Michigan of the Great Lakes region. Coming in second place in the co-ed in the region behind Western University of Canada.
again. Alil Sosa is just giving up some easy points here. It's, it's early in this third game. The last thing you want to do is give anyone uh, free ones, and particularly a player of the caliber of Zhang. And it just felt like that forehand top spin serve wasn't very well disgu uh, disguised. Uh, Alil had plenty of time to step around and, and hit the forehand. That's more like it from Zhang. Needs to tighten up here. Really can't afford a big margin, or rather a big deficit uh, in this game, being down 2-1. Khalil takes this, that's the match. And Khalil electing to get a little, a little cute, little snarky there with his own chop lock, uh, but that ball just sat up too high and Zhang made him pay for it. Very nice read on that serve. Returned by Alil. More of a top spin, side spin serve. Not much to it. shaping up to be a pretty good rally unfortunately ends in a errant forehand into the bottom of the net. Shall serve return this match has been consistent but maybe a little more defensive than would have served him well. Leaving a lot of opportunity for Alil to attack early on in points when serving. Just a really, you know, four broke backhand drive there, if you will, for Zhang. He, he really wasn't on position. Uh, to take a, a, a really effective cut on the ball, which is why he ended up going across and off balance on one leg. Look at that reach there by Sosa's. Just beautiful reaction and just enough feel to get it to the open table. I mean, Zhang was fully committed on that step around forehand. But just a great shot there from Sosa's. And that there is a textbook example of the disadvantage of that penhold forehand traditional dominant style stepping so far out wide. Stepping so far out wide, t pulling him out of the court in that last point. And that there might be sort of a retort to um, that the point before pulling in the backhand there instead of choosing to step out, keeping him in the point. that rally, Alil has four match point opportunities. There's nothing wrong, wrong with wanting to go ahead and, and end the rally, get through this point so you can go up uh, and close out this match for his team. 
at the same time, you just don't want to really play too many loose points and give uh, Zhang an opportunity to get back in this match. Sure, Alil, definitely a calculated player. Although you can't always calculate net balls like that into the equation, even for a senior math major like Mr. Sosis. And now, although Elil still has two more match points, he does have to win one of those points on Zhao Zhang's serve now. Curious to see what type of serves Zhang will pull out at this juncture to try to remain above ground and force the fifth game. Well, the one thing about it is you don't want to press and try to win points off of the serve. Um, really, it's about just playing the smart serve, playing it correctly, whether or not it's going to be heavy spin or not. Um, you know, not wanting to give Zhang too much um, time to step around and hit a forehand. So if he is going to have uh, one bounce along, it needs to be an aggressive uh, one bounce along. Good minute to ponder his options here. Zhang. more match points. And Zhang able to defend three match points, but the fourth bringing it to a close with Alil winning the game 11 to nine, taking this first singles match three games to one. And that now brings the head-to-head -head between the colleges to 2-0. Fourth singles right now being played on court two. Alexander Kai is, uh, I believe, leading 2-0, but I can confirm that shortly. He might be down 2-0. correct. Columbia is up 2-0 in that outside match in the fourth singles. Alexander Sai versus Ziri Chan. That will make this interesting then.
this match here is the third singles for the University of Michigan versus Columbia co-ed teams. Elin Dung, though, certainly debatable whether he would be third singles by skill on the team. He was the uh, Great Lakes Region men's singles champion last year. Jerome certainly has his work cut out for him here with a 350 point approximately rating deficit with Elin being at 2348 and Jerome being at 1989. So on paper we're expecting Elin to be dominant in this match. Absolutely, and just looking at these previous match scores and the ratings we have on paper, uh, Michigan is really living up to their eighth seed, uh, having a fairly balanced roster. There may be not one player on that on that roster that's clear cut head and shoulders above everyone else on the table, uh, but a roster yet deep enough to not only qualify for nationals, uh, but to make it through all the way uh, to this quarterfinal lineup against. Columbia, obviously Columbia um, attempted to get their best lineup out possible by moving uh, Jerome Villar out of the fourth singles and moving him up uh, into the third uh, with the hopes that uh, Ziri Chan of Columbia uh, can win that and the possibility of uh, getting to the doubles. But in the event that uh, Elin Dung closes this out, that will be a 3-0 lead for Michigan, um, and they will advance to the next round. Uh, so really, it would have to be up to uh, Jerome Villar to pull something amazing uh, out of his hat, as it looks like his teammate, Ziri Chan, is up 2-0 against Alexander Sai, now leading 8-5 in the third game. That was a great example of Elin Dung's extremely dangerous flat short pips punching backhand. I've seen him put away countless players this year and last year with that shot, dominating tons of points by just attacking aggressively on any high ball, hitting through flat, and with those pips, extremely difficult for the opponent to properly read the angle of the paddle because the amount of spin on the ball is just slightly less precise due to the, uh, the increased variability from those pips. there, you know, Jerome Villar is not going to get very many of those. He has to connect on each and every one of those forehands as if they are truly a gift. Four. 
And Elin Dong uh, does not hesitate to leverage the pips side of his paddle on the backhand side uh, to change it up on his service. And in fact, in some of the matches I've seen him play, he even favors that backhand serve, depending on his opponent's style. Tough end to the first game for Jerome Villar, losing on a service error, 5-11. game timeout as Elin Ding of Michigan takes game number one. We'd like to take an opportunity to thank our wonderful sponsors Yola Visit Eau Claire Hong Space United States Coast Guard the wonderful group at NCTTA and our new partner Bluestone Designs and Creations. Just really appreciative of each and every one of those sponsors for supporting college table tennis at highest level and this event would not be possible without each and every one of them we thank those those wonderful sponsors uh, if you are here in the building get a chance to check out uh, your tournament program to visit the websites again if you ever get a chance to visit the great state of Wisconsin you should drive on through Eau Claire it's a beautiful place with beautiful people and pick up some cheese curds while you're at it. A nice lunging forehand, catching uh, Elin Dung off guard there. but he does not seem phased. It's just such a quick, compact motion, accelerating the ball on Elin's backhand. Beautiful to see. Slightly scary. seem like Elin playing slightly more nonchalant than, than maybe in some of his other matches, likely due to a sense that he is decidedly in control of the outcome of this match. Yeah, well, one of the biggest things that he was really smart about it, he just go ahead and close this match out and you don't want to expend too much more energy out on the table again it's a very long day and a long weekend so if you in anticipate advancing you want to just get out on the court take care of business go to the other side and uh, support your uh, your teammates uh, and if your teammates are done you, you know take a break and just really relax and decompress from this last match uh, but knowing that you have to get ready so even on a match that feels a little lopsided like this as it is on paper with the University of Michigan player favored uh, he really doesn't want to expend a lot of energy just standing around on court. So true. And that sentiment really compounds the higher uh, or rather stronger uh, the player is in this tournament because if you go deep in these draws and you're going tr deep in multiple draws, then you know you could have triple the matches just by being in three events, but then you could have triple the matches in each event versus another player who's in three events but gets knocked out in the first round. It is a very full weekend for the strongest players like Elin. He did catch, catch a little break going out early in the men's doubles. 
but I expect a deep run from him in the men's singles, which I believe starts tomorrow. Great step around there from uh, Jerome Villar. I'd like to see his fight in this. He's got it tied up seven all again. Elin Ding allowing Jerome Villar just to kind of hang around a bit. So a great backhand punch there straight into the body of Villar. And I will correct myself, uh, looking at the schedule here, uh, the entirety of the men's, women, men's and women's singles will take place this Sunday. And it will be accompanied by uh, it will be accompanied by nothing. It is all singles, all Sunday. Elin looks extremely comfortable in that backhand corner, redirecting off the serve down the forehand line. And I think that catches a lot of players off guard, being able to redirect off of a serve so early. And part of that is certainly attributed to the pips, decreasing the effectiveness of side spin on uh, the the serve return that Elin takes. So he can he can uh, rely more just on the angle of the paddle and the trajectory of the ball coming as opposed to having to factor in the the side spin kicking it out and perhaps causing him to miss wide. Definitely looks like uh, out on table number two that Ziri Chen took care of business. It does put Columbia on the board. They still trail 2-1. Elin Ding, Michigan takes care of business here. Michigan will defeat Columbia 1-3-1. So somehow Jerome Villar is able to put together a string of points and take this they will then end up in doubles, where in this lineup, Michigan is putting out Elio Sosis and Eling Ding in doubles versus Zhao Zhang and Ziri Chan of Colombia. So we have to get there first, and it's all pretty much on the racket of Jerome, Jerome Villar of Colombia. After the conclusion of this co-ed match, we are looking forward to the women's doubles championship round semifinals between the Western U University's Jia Ye Ni and Joy Shu versus UCLA's Angie Tan and Joanna Sung. That is the two, three versus, uh, two seed versus the three seed. And I am very excited for it. Absolute weapon of a backhand there. Bullet. And Jerome Villar getting a little cute there with the some snake action of his own underneath the table. Yes, I think he wanted to be cuter than he was though. hand there down the line from Villar. Just a little bit too much on it for 
Keelan dang the handle. That's now two all here in the third game. Keelan Ding closes it out. Michigan will advance. If Jalom Villar pulls this off, we will be going to the fifth and deciding doubles. that court there ending a well fought point by Jerome Yola barriers around the two show courts this year. It's just a really clean presentation. Even though there's a black uh, background, uh, the color waves, the yellow and the uh, Trinity symbol really pop off on these barriers. Mesh really well uh, with this wonderful red flooring that we have here. And again, the darker uh, accents on the tables. It's a really great presentation here. Our, uh, Operations team did a great job laying down the floors uh, over the past day or so. And the camera crew is at great position and angles. Just really just all around a top notch uh, event. We have Olympians competing at this event. We have current professional table tennis players competing in this event. It's a super high level. Awesome opportunity for the city of Eau Claire and the state of Wisconsin to have some awesome table tennis. Go ahead and finish this out. I mean, it's, I've seen two just all out forehand slap go for brokes uh, in this game alone. Um, so while I understand he is comfortable with his lead, um, he just seems to have no patience for an extended point right now. And Columbia calling timeout. That that's actually a decision coming from the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe the the team. Columbia is seeing something that we're not seeing because they feel like they have a, a chance to get their player back into this game. It might be that they're, sa they're, they're seeing the impatience on Elin's side. They might just be saying, okay, we know your opponent right now wants to get off this court for one reason or the other. So if you can increase the quality of your shot a little bit more, place it a little wider, keep it a little lower, higher quality spin, maybe he'll, he'll push it a little bit more. That error count could come up just enough to get you tight enough for victory. Yeah, there's definitely room and opportunity uh, for Gerald Villar of Columbia to get back into this match. I'm hoping that uh, Leo Sosis in the Michigan corner just uh, instructed e Linding to just, just get on the table, play the right shots, wait for your opening, take that, let's go rest. rest. Feels like miles away. Six nine feels doable, but six ten—that's a whole nother story. Zhang Zhao was unable to hold off four 
match point. Let's see. And there we have it. Elin Ding of Michigan closes it out 11-6 in game number three. Good effort by Jerome Villar of Columbia. Michigan advances 3-1. Again, you are watching the co-ed event here on day one of the 2024 Collegiate National Table Tennis Championships. I'm Joe Wells. Alongside me is Justin D'Antonio. We will be back shortly. Next up is men's and women's semifinals of doubles where we will have uh, the pairing of Western uh, Jai Ni and Joyce Shu versus US, UCLA's Angie Tan and Joanna Sung. Very excited for that. See you then.